Hello there everyone and welcome to episode 9 of us playing as Northwest National Defense Front. Um, we gotta talk about prepare for Congress though. Unlike the small underground national congresses of the past, the front has not taken root in all regions of Western China. And neither the size of the party nor the extent of its bases are comparable to those of the past. So before the formal convening, convening of the 9th National Congress, most order preparatory meeting had closely planned the preparations for the delegates from all over the country to go to Xi'an and participate in the Congress. Most order preparatory com before the Ninth National Congress is uh, formally held. Day by day, we are well aware that the possession of nuclear weapons cannot be achieved by now, but we are still determined to rise to the challenge and work hard day and night to prove to the world that the Chinese people will not bow to the atomic bombs of the Japanese imperialists. China's determination to resist is higher than a mountain, deeper than the sea, and more indestructible than a diamond. How are you supposed to, okay, let's say you get a nuclear bomb. How are you going to deliver it? We have no planes. Xinjiang region is of great significance in China's nuclear program. After further dialogue and validation with Xinjiang representatives, the Xinjiang border region government will provide full support to the OR program by upgrading the program schedule by one and a half per month. Ooh, that's be good too. But after the end of the Xinjiang civil war, General Ma Zhongying had been the ruler of Xinjiang for several years. Now he's come to Congress with great effort and together with the people of Xinjiang, showing his firm support for the reunification of the motherland. Xinjiang will undertake a more significant historical mission in the future planning of the front, and we extend our highest respect to General Ma Zhongying and the Xinjiang people who have always supported us. And out of work, with a writing desk, two popular chairs, a bright green covered lamp, plus a stack of half meter high documents, this is the office of Zhu Enlai Bit Jian. The room is very large, and it is just to facilitate the reception of cadres, but more seemingly small furnishings inside the house have a house path empty. The night is very late, the moon is high. The office dares not open the lights, not only an apricot sized lamp to light up the writing desk, mos mosquitoes like a bomb raiding through. The office lit up mosquito incense, but the anti shock tape sealed the window cannot breathe. The smoke choked zoo and lies, reviewing documents from time to time, lightly coughing a couple times. He call, call heat from the duty room. Zoo and lie agreed to the clerk. He, he sat across the writing desk. Accompanied by reviewing the draft minutes of the meeting, the way, and the consultation, Zhu and Lai reviewed one sentence at a time, and after reading one sentence, he used a pen to draw a small circle after that sentence. He now browsed once and forget it, but while reading and thinking, sometimes stopping to think about it, something sometimes asking Zhao. He has a sentence too. Then I was very quick and took quite a long time before Zhu and Lai finished reviewing it and handed the manuscript to Zhao He. Tomorrow morning, to the printing room. Remember the provincial cadres, a single copy. The clock struck three o'clock and the night was still deep. The duty room attendant sat two cups of black tea that must be prepared when staying up late, plus a plate of peanuts. Placed on the rotting desk, Zhu and Lai asked the waiter to pour himself another cup and three people together to drink tea and eat peanuts. Twisting a peanut, two fingers uncontrollably crushed, Zhu and Lai muttered in a low voice, I can't bite it a bit. The waiter and Xiao looked at each other and each understood something. If you sleep now, you must not be in the morning, and Zhu and Lai has a meeting at seven, so the three people intentionally had small sips of tea, but the peanuts ate clean early. The waiter's a uh, cup of tea was the first to the bottom. He saw Zhu and Lai sleep. He stood up and the premier said, I'll let the kitchen prepare some supper. Zhu and Lai did not object and the waiter took away the empty plates and cups and left without taking the door. Zhao He also got up. Premier, I'm going to deliver the documents. I guess I'll be back by 5 o'clock. Zhu and Lai nodded. Go ahead and I'll have breakfast together when you return. Yes, sir. Clock dang, 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 dang. Oh. We just annexed, we just annexed Tibet. That'd be cool. Thai-Cambodian War. And the upsetting changes in the situation in Southeast Asia, especially the frequent victories of the Communist forces, have made the Thai government furious. In today's press conference, the military spokesman uh, publicly declared that Japan's security guarantees for allies such as Indochina Peninsula are just empty words. Then, in response, Japan's Nagata town, Thailand's openly withdrawn from the Kopra Spirit Sphere and mobilized its troops to eliminate the Red Bandits on the peninsula occasionally. Personally, everything should be on its own. Oh, would you look at that? Well, that's certainly not good. Did you guys get manpower back? Save a little bit. Until this being get down there. Breaking. The outbreak of the Thai Cambodian War was undoubtedly a major test for the nascent revolutionary alliance of Southeast Asia. Perhaps also for Deng Xiaoping's personal ability. From the time he stepped into the office of the Secretariat early in the morning, the Secretariat had been handing himself a steady stream of telegraphs from Hainan, Vietnam, and Burma. In order to make clear what happened in Southeast Asia in the past two days, he even asked someone to send him a map of the whole of the South China Peninsula to lay on the floor tiles of his office. And instead, I only began to take a pen to mark everywhere. The dense stream of information gradually formed a complete chain of events spread out in front of him. The Thai army had captured Phnom Phen in a very short time, almost like nobody's business. The Cambodian Communist Party top brass and up and captured. 
but I'd moved to the deep north and into Vietnam in preparation for seeking aid from the AURU. ARU. However, the Viet Cong, with whom the Communist Party of Vietnam had a history of blood, blood had disarmed all the Cambodian Communist Party troops that had been forced to be pulled back into Vietnam and exploded Ng Sari, a matter that had been ruffled the feathers of Paul Paul was greatly annoyed and sent seven telegrams to the Hainan protest. Feng Bai Zhu intended to mediate, but the level of dispute between the two parties is too high. Just like a Hainan branch security of the seat does not have the right to unauthorized decision, he had a Xi'an power request to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China to mediate the conflict between the Vietnamese and Cambodian Communist Party. And at late at night, Deng Xiaoping's brain is still running at high speed, thinking of both when the Northwest can retreat, but also to preserve the hard won fruits of the revolution in Southeast Asia. Until the door knocking on the door is getting heavier and heavier. He pulled the door open with some displeasure. I've already told you I'm here tonight. His voice suddenly showed up when he raised his eyes. The visitor was Mao Secretary. Secretary Deng, Chairman Mao is asking you to make a trip to his place as soon as possible. Copy that. I'm going now. Nice. Alright, boys and girls. Oh, we sent the wrong group, whatever. Let's see what type of mess we can get ourselves involved with here. Oh, that's not good. And eh, that's better. After the liberation of Tibet, the Tibetan people set off a vigorous social transformation movement, and the week of advanced contacts afterwards. The Premier and Zhu and Lao to understand the difficult problems of present day development of Tibet to make suitable adjustments to the transformation. Happy October, everybody! Night talk. Oh, look at that! Great rating improved. Deng Xiaoping pushed open the door to Mao Zedong's room. Chairman, what can I do for you? As soon as the words left his mouth, he skimmed his eyes and saw Jen Yi sitting on the sidelines. And Lao's gone to Hanzong to do the research. So the central government's catastrophic period of time are on you. Hard work. I called you here tonight mainly to discuss the recent events in Southeast Asia. Please ask Chen to tell us about the news from the foreign ministry. Mao Zedong sat behind his desk, clutching a document in his hands and raising his eyes. Chen Yi took a deep breath and stood up from the sofa. The general secretary of the Burmese Communist Party, Dekin Dantong, has asked for assistance from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thailand has instigated an armed rebellion in Burma's current, current state. Along with the reactionary warlords in the old liberated area of Kachin, the situation is temporarily out of control. We are expected to give military assistance. The words just fell. Deng Xiaoping nodded. There's also news from the Hainan that the Viet Cong, Cambodian communists are in conflict and wanted to ask the central government to mediate. The Southeast Asia has been in a lot of chaos lately. Mao Zedong put down the document in his hands. ASEAN was established not long ago and will accept the challenge of Thailand, which is the boss is of Southeast Asia. The two men responded in a chorus. It's essentially a paper tiger, Mao Zedong turned. Thailand's not engaged with Thai rejuvenation. Well, but these years around, our few reactionary military head of an enemy infighting. I don't see what reju rejuvenation is reasoning, in my opinion. A Thai Cambodian war stalemate would not be more than three months. Deng Xiaoping's brain turned fast, responded at once. What the president means is that our great gaze should be more. Look farther ahead. Mao Zedong said at this point it had been hard to hide his inner excitement. Stood up himself. This period of time since the action of Southeast Asia shaking the greatest link in the chain of Japanese imperialism. The next would be a good time for a party to unite and lead up to other communist parties in Southeast Asia and set off a communist movement in Asia. Deng Xiaoping and Chen Yi glanced at each other and mutually understood what Chairman Mao uh, meant. When the Prime Minister returns, we'll organize a formal meeting of the central government. And that's why we're here. Help out. How much artillery? Do we have any spare artillery? No, not really. We're going to throw in one more infantry then. Day to day. They appear somewhere. I, mean, I can't imagine the military is very strong. Today in meeting, Deng Xiaoping was speaking eloquently as he stood in front of the huge full map of the central and southern peninsulas. And although the disparity in form made him look a little out of place in front of such a large map, the various responsible comrades in the central committee present, present should not have cared about this as Deng spoke, all began to think of a bright and unlimited future, a time when the Chinese Communist Party led the revival of the international communist movement. Some rise believe that the time is right for a party to take the lead in establishing an international communist camp and that in view of the current uh, international situation, the close unity of the communist parties of the countries of so East and Southeast Asia is necessary for overall goal of defeating Japanese imperialism and liberating East Asia. As soon as the words left his mouth, the tidal wave of applause resounded throughout the hall. Mao Zedong stood up and continued with Deng Xiaoping's words, Comrade Xiaoping. That's pretty much said what I wanted to say, so I'll raise two points. First, this alliance to be built for the purpose of overthrowing Japanese imperialism and for the liberation of oppressed peoples of Asia. So it should be called the Asia National Revolutionary League. Second, this alliance is necessary for our overall goal of defeating Japanese imperialism and liberating East Asia. 
Second point is that this alliance is not built solely for the purpose of solely defeating Japanese imperialism. Even after we pass the hurdle of war of liberation, a government in the party will have to see that there are many other forms of imperialism in the world, including Nazi imperialism of Germany and the liberal imperialism of the United States. And the burden of the party will become heavier and heavier with the growing strength of the revolution. Heavier and heavier, and the young comrades among us must be prepared to lead our party in the Union in the future. Signal to the revolutionary line, to the anti imperialist line, and to the people's line. The crowd applauded again, deeply impressed. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is going to be busy. Yeah, their armor's not very good. Which is good for us. Help them out. Hey, we're acceptable, finally. Better resources, nice. Even better resources after that? Okay, we'll take it. Yeah, you can be a scavenger. You know, we don't have the most weapons here. Oh, I'm out. Oh, it's in the mountains, huh? Ah, Burma declared war on Thailand, too. Look at that. Oh. That's a little better for us. Less inflation, please. Cut the tough capitalism. Well, it's not great to lower our growth, but at the same time. The Revolutionary Alliance of Southeast Asia joins Thai Cambodian War. Oh, okay, so they do have the Revolutionary Alliance of Southeast Asia, so. Cool. Getting the others involved, nice. Smart. Nice. Deputies from Shangxi. It's one of the earliest regions under our full control. We entered Xi'an in 1947. Shangxi, especially the cities of Hain, Hain, Xi'an and Hanzhong. Provided considerable experience to draw upon in our attempts to explore socialist construction and long-term anti-Japanese construction. Deputies from Northwest. Out of the rebellion of the Lamal clique, the central government have focused on meditating Hanhui relations, formulating correct ethnic policies, and practicing the principle of ethnic equality. And now it's time to reap the harvest. We're resolved with the almost the sincerity of this ethnic conflict that once drove the front into a desperate situation. Now that the various ethnic groups in the Northwest are united and equal and close as one family, we'll surely rely on the strong support of the people of all ethnic groups throughout the country to accomplish the great historical task of unification against Japan. Hey, increase in admin efficiency. If you want to do this, please go ahead. We have a functional admin efficiency system now. Functional administrative system. More taxable population, better consumer co goods, cost factor. Something to love. Fantastic. Now we're just going to just completely destroy this. Point seven percent growth, not bad. Decent. I want you to find them and just kill them as best you can. The war against Sunni families. Huh? Oh, well, okay. Hey, they got Bangkok too. Look at that. I guess we're going to go this way, too. Time to just eat Tibet, I guess, you know. When in Tibet, you eat them. My death is better. Growth is not bad. I like it. But do we have as cores? I love it. from the Northwest. Uh, oh! Revolutionary, revolutionary Alliance of Southeast Asia repels Thai invasion. Look at that. We're going to about that. Please go ahead. Oh, Cambodia's red now. Look at that. Kyo Sampan. Oh, wait, what? Uh, okay, interesting. Well... Is that bugged? That might still be bugged. I don't know. Hey, 
hey, we got better military professionals as well. We're actually going to lose political power. Look at that, huh? Go figure. Yeah, on, on inspection. Deputies from Sichuan. Among the many border areas divided and ruled by the front, Chuan had been the best natural conditions and the most superior industrial base. The representatives of the Chuan branch had many advanced insights in economic construction and the future when the whole country is liberated. The experience they have accumulated in Chuan will be effectively guide the front in receiving the Japanese industrial heritage and successfully completing the important task of industrializing the whole country. Yan'an inspection. We've been in the millet in the northwest for more than 20 years, and Yan'an uh, smells the best. The Prime Minister is a southern. I will inform the kitchen immediately if there's anything uncomfortable in the meal. Used to it. Used to it. Just follow your usual. First half of the day's inspection was soon over. And Zun Lai and the group of local party secretaries rushed back to the small cafeteria of Yan'an City Hall and many of us for lunch. Zun Lai understood that the meal had been arranged for him by the di dietitian and the local mini cafeteria. He sort of tried his best to stay face with the leading cadres in the car who thought they were safe and sound, not to irritate them for seeing things they shouldn't see during their inspection. The waiter pushed open the small door of the cafeteria, brought translucent under the large window, set up two round tables and a half dozen pair of dishes. Meals that had been served ensured that a line of people to the ground started eating. A plate of staple food, half of the rolls and half of the bun or white flour. A plate of cumin lamb, salt material used very thinly. A plate of uh, sauce, casserole fish, light sauce, vinegar, vegetarian dishes are sweet and sour shredded potatoes and cold cucumber peppers shreds. Near the door on the cupboard, squatting a steaming pot of lump soup. Looking at the table full of dishes, Zuan Lai's heart, like a pincer, kept pinching him. Even if the company leader's smiling face could not be pleased to sit down. He had gestured to the group to sit down and eat first. They deliberate the whole country in the future. The economic construction of the base areas cannot be slackened, and the trust of the people of Nas cannot be wasted. All the people at the table were just eating. No one dared to answer the words that Zuan Lai threw out. Now, Zuan Lai could not hold back any longer. The words repressing his heart finally flowed out like a machine gun. Secretary Jin told me that Yan'an is poor in the north and rich in the south, but today I went to Guangkan. And the situation is not optimistic. A glance at the village shows that some of the masses have no food or clothes to wear. And this is still the situation in the rich country you call it. Zhu and Lai shook his head very painfully, backhanded a roll from the primary food plate, and took it trembling to each cadre of buried his head in the hard work of eating in front of his eyes. The sound of utensils chiming slowly stopped, and the hands that were pinching the food returned to their original positions, and the small canteen was unusually quiet. Wow, a country partly party secretary shivered. The chopsticks in the rim of the bowl were touched to the ground, but he could not be bothered to pick them up. The Secretary Von Sai said that the road to his place has to be maintained today, and advised me not to go and inspect it this afternoon. So as to save the car from making a trip or nothing, I accept your kindness, I'll tell everyone that I'm not going anywhere this afternoon. Just sit there and do not move. Zhu and Lai's speech was getting louder and louder, so much so that he even realized that he hurriedly took a deep breath to suppress his belly full of fire, and ruthlessly used a consultative tone to his room of people to make a request, but that, put down the baggage in your heart, the central government will not blame you, nor will make things difficult for you. Only if you are honest with me, I can solve the problem. I'll give you one afternoon in the production. Life problems encountered. Seriously, type report to me, okay? Just keep eating. That's how it's gonna work. Just keep on eating. Hey, got more. We'll get more stability, which is nice. I have an efficiency. Deputies from Sichuan, then we'll be good as well, because we just both improve healthcare and military professionalism. Uh, industrial expertise we could still work on. Look at that. Keep slamming down the debt. Looking better. And trying to get rid of inflation. Dab, just from Zikong. Although Zikong has been under the hope uh, of transforming the border into a hinterland in the hands of successful rulers, the brutal Han rules has only had side effect on local development. Now the party's policies achieve great results among ethnic minorities. Oh, uh, a new view of Hanoi. As soon as the train entered the station, through the windows, uh, Wu Ju Quan saw rows of red flags floating in the wind and the crowds of people cheering the CPC delegation, of course. The most important thing was a familiar sickle symbol, which could be seen everywhere, and which, since 1970, had a special magical power. No matter where the proletarians are, as long as they see the golden emblem of the sickle cross with a hammer, there will definitely be the Communist Party. The party of the proletariat, the party of the people, wherever the proletarians were, they saw the golden emblem of the cross, sickles, and hammers, it was bound to become his party, the party of the proletarians, the party of the people. From the window, we could see some uniform-looking delegates standing quietly, waiting on the platform with the flowers in their hands, and one of the journalists at the head of the group was well-marked and about the same age as himself. The one of the lead should be Wu Yuanjia, known as the Tiger of Dian Bian Fu. There's no excuse for fighting, it's this one. Luo Chongqing came to Wu Qiu Quan's side and gave a thumbs up. He said to the Yunnan lecture hall, it's kind of that he should be an alumnus of the General Zhu. Wu Yu Quan nodded. I must remember when the news of their victory in the summer and fall border battles reached Yan'an. The president was quite excited and took the newspaper around to praise Wu. Yuan Jia for being a Tiger General, and Wei Guo Qing for being a good military advisor. As soon as his voice fell, he looked at it like he remembered something. Speaking of Wei Guo Qing, uh, it seems that the comrades representing the South China Bureau didn't come over. This time it's a big negotiation, so only ask 
to the central government to send a plenipotentiary delegation to come. I heard the Secretary Yi, Secretary Zhao, Secretary there still with uh, Ma Wang Chi in the black market of Guangdong. Macau will do a do. Uh, do real estate and home appliance businesses, but also to go around and collect Guangdong's intelligence, but also assist in Hainan Secretary Feng, that piece of offshore defense. Messy to come, also have no time. Two people laughed, and this time the train whistle issued a loud sound. Two people's foot sh feet shook, and the train then stopped. The two looked at each other, nodded, and walked to the door that was about open. They believed that there will be a welcome flowers outside the door. Hey, we'll see. Yep. Well, I guess we still do it anyways. Deputies and Central Ministries meeting. Uh, after dealing with local affairs, Premier Zhu and Lai also had a summarized situation with the leading cadres of the central government at all levels, and the ministries and commissions that would make sure to brief into the central political bureau and the central people's government committee, respectively. Some of the past development experience learned the lessons of the past and welcomed the next socialist climax with full enthusiasm. Breaking meeting. The, the meeting on the establishment of the military alliance just ended. Zhu, Wu Yu Quan and Luo Cheng Qing put away the documents they had just signed and walked out of the hall. Outside the assembly hall is the Hanoi Revolution Square, which is still under construction. A crane is slowly lowering uh, a sapling and from the steps of the assembly hall. Assembly hall. You can still see from afar the workers riding the sapling and planting, planting the soil. Lao Luo, you know well what comes to mind. Wu Zhu Quan's footsteps slow down a bit, looking at these saplings. I immediately recall the Zhang Ji Zhuang Ji written by Gui Yu Guang. What about Lo Quat tree, trees in the court? My wife's hand. <clears throat> Planted in the year of her death, also. Luo Chang Ch Cheng Ching subconsciously recited his paragraph. Wu Zhu Quan immediately picked up the last sentence. Now it's already a pavilion like a cover. After a long moment of silence, Wu Zhu Quan pointed to the saplings that had just been planted in the distance in Hanoi's Revolutionary Square. Do you think those things will be, a be able to pavilion like a cover? Luo Cheng Ching sighed. We don't necessarily see the day. The two looked at each other and smiled at each other. I was the first creation of the ANLRL. Not like the saplings, we are the ones who planted the saplings of the Asian Revolution with our own hands. Wu Zhu Quan's face seemed to have overflowed with a proud smile. Let her children and grandchildren enjoy the shade of green. Central Ministries meeting. Which we have to do next. Are you okay, Vietnam? It was business as usual on the street, as people walked along the tracks of their own lives and started their new day's work. No sadness or joy, and the weather was just as ordinary as it was in Xi'an today. But instead of the Foreign Ministry of Affairs, it was a sad day as Kiao. Guan Hua put away his usual cheerful smile and rather obituary of Hu's death on his colleagues, to his colleagues with a grim expression on his face. Most people acted shocked and lamented. What a pity. What a good man. He at least saw the country liberated. Thinking of the work experience in Vietnam, an uncle who was kind figure. Tears came out of Luo Guibo's eyes. He could not suppress his grief and ran out of the office and went to the toilet alone and cried. After getting the news, Zhu and Lai was also in the office secretly weeping tears, not for only the loss of a good friend in the Northwest grief, but also for the grief. A sense of powerlessness heavily attacked the whole body. When can I see the liberation of China, huh? The door to the office was open, and the secretary, Xiao He, returned from Chairman Mao, was clutching a large bundle of the file folders on his chest, all the reports in Vietnam from the South China Bureau. Fan Van Dong, the Ch uh, Vietnamese prime premier, vice premier, was going to personally lead a visit to the Northwest in a month, and he had suggested that the three important topics between China and Vietnam needed to be resolved perfectly, and Zhu and Lai would have to prepare for the talks in advance. Chairman Mao has been notified of Ho Chi Minh's death, the chairman said he wanted to smoke, but Dr. Fu didn't let him. Xiao He gently stacked the files on Zhu and Lai's desk, Chairman Liu and said he's going to do the train station to pick up the Vietnamese delegates and ask Gansu Province to make preparations. Only then did Zhu and Lai notice the files under the table that remained silent, stretching out his trembling hand to yank out a document, but with one force yank, he yanked, uh, he yanked down the entire amount of the literature. Xiao He rushed to the table to help the file up, and that's when she saw the Premier's written eyes. Premier, you're crying. I'm sorry, Xiao He, I'm a little hard to bear. Let me go and get you a glass of water after saying this. Xiao opened the thermos, clattered, and filled the teacup and brought it to the table. Zhu and Lai exerted himself to calm down a bit, and after drinking, not only a drop of not a drop of water, water was left. Finally, to regain his composure, I made the working arrangements. Tell Comrade Luo Guibo to come see me at 8 o'clock in the evening. I might want to do Ministries of Industry next. The Ministry of Industry would make a report of the central government on the great industrial progress made by the defense the front during the past four years of socialist construction. Hey, look at that. Hey, better research facilities. Fantastic. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Not sure when, but eventually.
miles of journeys. The international now resounded throughout all of Hanoi. Uh, all the preparatory agendas of the Newborn Age of Re National Revolutionary League, ANLR, have been successfully completed, and today was the day of the celebration was formally declared to the world. Wu Zhu Quan had been unable to hold back his excitement. He could even imagine the 10,000 miles away in Yan'an. The chairman Mao and others must be listening to the real-time broadcast of the Congress. He clutched the speech document in his hands and listened carefully to the simultaneous translation of the speech of the Congress moderator, Lai Shute, in his headphones. This Congress is authorized a specially appointed plenipotentiary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, Comrade Wu Zhu Quan, to read the Declaration of the Asian National Revolutionary League. All rise and shout proletarians of the world unite. Chinese, Vietnamese, Cambodian, and Burmese slogans now erupted in a frenzy of passion and fervor, but Wu Zhu Quan could not hear anything else. He could only hear his heartbeat, his footsteps, and his breath. Surrounded by applause and slogans, Wu Zhu Quan walked up to the speaker's platform with his head held high from now. Declaration of the ANLR Since the widespread emergence of the revolutionary movements in the countries of Southeast Asia, the situation in Asia has changed significantly, and the vast number of peoples oppressed and exploited by the Japanese imperialism are rising up against the, cruel, the, uh, the cruelty of the invaders. In the face of the situation, the contracting parties believe that it is necessary to establish an anti imperialist alliance comprising all the revolutionary countries of Asia, in order to overthrow the co prosperity sphere, which is a prison for all the peoples of Asia. For the purposes of the core, the contracting parties sent their pl plenipotentiaries and, after consensus, formally agreed to establish the ANLR as follows. The primary goal of the state's parties is to overthrow the colonial rule of the Japanese co prosperity sphere and liberate the peoples of Asia through revolutionary struggle, and who colludes with Japanese imperialism who shall be the common enemy of the contracting parties. And at the same time, the contracting party shall be willing to maintain normal exchanges with neutral countries on the basis of respect for the sovereignty and independence of each country, non interference in its internal affairs, and coexistence on an equal footing. The state parties shall consult each other on all important international issues of common interest in the spirit of strengthening solidarity and mutual assistance among the revolutionary countries. 3. In the event of an armed attack on Asia by any state or group of states against the contracting states, all contracting states shall exercise the right of self defense individually or collectively and render full support of the attack state in all reasonable forms available to it, including the dispatch of armed forces. The state's party shall establish a joint command center for the purpose of unifying and coordinating the cooperation and collaboration of the states and the military activities concerned, and each state shall be represented in the joint command center in order to assume its responsibilities. The state parties shall establish a permanent political consultative body responsible for the day-to-day -day work of the alliance and for considering, approving, and implementing and proposals from the states. Each state party shall be represented on the political consultative body. The state's party shall all respect each other's territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence, refrain from interfering in each other's internal affairs, help each other in the economic and military fields, unite as one, and give active assistance to the anti-imperialist forces of other countries in the struggle for the complete liberation of the Asian nation, signed on behalf of the party states by, by China, Nguo Giu Quan, Vietnam, Wu Van Kha, Myanmar, Deshen Than Tong, uh, Cambodia, Kyo Sam Fan, Malaya, Jinping. Rise of people who don't want to be slaves. It has been 60 years. The end game of anti imperialist liberation cause of Asia is coming now. Uh, no agreement will be added to miscellaneous laws. Uh, what does that do? Great change in East Asia. Look at that. Seems like yesterday that, the, that Japan withdrew from Vietnam, but today the situation has in Asia has turned upside down. In Hawaii, Vietnam, the Communist Party of Southeast Asia joined a joint decla declaration to form a new international organization, the Asian uh, Revolutionary Alliance, the ARA. The new organization declared its intention to challenge the Japanese Empire on the west coast of the Pacific Ocean to liberate the oppressed and exploited peoples of Asia. As a result of the citizen change in the situation, the governments of Laos announced that it would withdraw from the co prosperity sphere and would maintain neutrality, an untenable situation that infuriated the Japanese government. China's government has expressed strong concern with the turn of events in Southeast Asia, and Nanking has sent a diplomatic note to Japan requesting that Sino Japanese talks be convened on, on an ad hoc basis to discuss issues relating to the strengthening of law and order uh, for some enemies. Something's breaking, but I can't say. I oh, don't know, man. I think we're kind of trying to be too big right now, and we're not that strong. Oh, look at that. Oh, we got all them too. That's nice. The template is trash. But this thing looks better. quite a few more things in our, here, aren't we? Don't get me wrong, I like it that we're adding all these things in here, but still. Look at that. 
Bara på tärderna. Ministry of the Interior. The Ministry of the Interior will present a report of the Central Committee on the Great Progress made by the Defense Front's internal affairs during the past four years of socialist construction. Ministry of Industry, which we read earlier. Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry of Agriculture will present a report of the Central Committee on the Great Progress made by the Defense Front and Agriculture during the past four years of socialist construction. As well as uh, foreign affairs. Goodbye, Vietnam. In the square in the front of the Xiang Council of State came a convoy of the Vietnamese diplomatic delegation consisting of Pan Pan Dong, Le Bambu, and a group of grassroots members of the Viet Cong Communist Party in the reception hall. The delegation met Zhu and Lai, who just pushed off for their work and rushed to meet them. Welcome, I heard from the comrade in charge of the reception that you have trained, traveled all the way north from southern Tibet, taking the route to Lanzhou to reach us. It's really hard work. Compared to, uh, compared to meeting you, it's nothing. President Hu said that used to say he always missed the Chinese comrades even when they are thousands of miles away. <clears throat> Mention the recently deceased Hu Zimin. Zhu and Lai can help out being a trance. The two met in the revolutionary Guangzhou. We're going to gather in the rear of Chongqing. The revolution has not yet succeeded, but I did not expect that the man had gone and no longer can handle the words of joy. Fan Wen Tong seemed to notice Zhu and Lai's mood is a bit low. Tentatively asks, Come here, Zhu. It's not a little tired. Do you want us to? Zhu and Lai, back to God, smiled, waved his hand and said, Nothing, nothing. Remember the past and the Hu Zizi. Now they remember the past and Comrade Ho Chi Minh. Vietnam's liberation, although we didn't meet again, I can imagine its excitement. He pulled himself together, organized his saws, and continued, You are President Hu's first foreign visit after his death, and you came to the Great Northwest, proving the solid friendship between the two parties and the two peoples. Uh, Pham Ban Dong and Le Khan glanced at each other. Both of them wanted to end the talks as soon as possible and rushed back to Hanoi, as you, as you know. Vietnam's just been liberated, and there's a, new, need, there's a need for construction any, everywhere. And not to be afraid of the comrades' jokes for the, saying this, there's almost no rise for the pots and pans. A good-natured laugh rang out in the meeting room. Zhu Lai sniffed and replied, What Vietnam needs, we're willing to help. It's just that the Northwest is also having difficulties right now, he mused. We'll do our best. Friendship congealed, and the blood is more precious than anything else. Fan Nguyen Tong breathed a long sigh of relief and then said, There is one more thing to tell with the Chinese comrades. After President Hu left, we are also ready to carry out the election of the new leadership. Premier Zhu, you see, although he and Lai shoots, uh, are reluctant for China to intervene in internal affairs. After all, he was subject to a favor the same or a friend. A favor the same as comrades in arms who don't pass a gas also seemed to not say go. He was saying, Zhu and Lai raised his hands as a signal of pause and then firmly said, We are comrades and brothers' relationship. The Communist Party of China will not be friends with their things to dictate. Comrade Zhang Ying has also spoken with Comrade Wu Yuan Jia many times, and our attitude is consistent and clear. At this time, Lai Xu spoke up. Premier Zhu, we still have to rush back to the country to carry out our next work, so we won't stay much longer. We'll meet again in the Celebratory Congress when the Asian Revolution triumphs. Well, well, we'll see you on the VJ Day. Escalation of confrontation East Asia, so. If you're about this, please go ahead. We have the Red Scourge, the buzzword in the press in China, along with the anxiety of the Chinese government. Can't the Japanese do it themselves? Could they? It's kind of hard to read, too, so let's see. Do we have anything back? back get back in here? Anything in kind of colors? No, not really. Not too much, which kind of sucks. So, yearly deficit. It's green. It's a crap ton of debt. Or yearly deficit. But, oh, we're in the economic sphere. Asian Economic Cooperation Community. Led by the North West Defense Front. Oh, look at that. It's, kind of, it's really hard to see this, but total sphere GDP 13 billion. Almost 14 billion. Um, so, it is what it is. Um, some comments include from the last time. For any uh, mis misunderstandings, Pol Pot's more of a meme in the sub mob. And if you look at his profile, you see that his actual ideology is fascism. And his character profile portrays him as an idiot and a racist. My favorite. Ah, Central Ministries meeting. Cool. Request for sick leave. Zhu Lin, why didn't Comrade Xiao Ping come to the meeting today? Premier Deng Xiaoping broke his leg in the last past few days and couldn't walk, so I'm really sorry for not being able to talk to you in time. For what? Premier asked Deng Xiaoping to speak to you personally and he asked me for a microphone, okay? Premier Zhu, I'm really sorry to let this meeting for personal reasons. I really should make a review. Why are you sick, Premier? Uh, did Li Zhenyan speak at the meeting? I want to speak of things he did in, to, in advance to him. He did. Good. Then why did you fall? It's not easy to talk. Two days ago, I went up to the activity room to play billiards and fell off a billiard table and dislocated my thigh. Mr. Fu can testify. Oh, so then you have to make a sick leave then. Uh, you have two more meetings in the back and must take leave in advance. Yes, yes Prem uh, Prime Minister, definitely make up. The review doesn't need to be made public, so... I read these earlier, so if you want to read these again, please go ahead. Um, Avon efficiency, where are we up that? Eh. Yeah, we better take that one. Laos. Uh, Laos, Laos, Laos. Someone says, uh, as well, after the attack and Cambodian war broke out, win or lose, Pol Pot would be replaced by Kyo San Pan, as suggested by the Vietnamese in China. Someone says, I thought you were going to abandon Pol Pot, but good for you to stay home is with him in the fight against the Japanese puppet. Ocelot, Pol Pot, leader portrait using glasses, given some interesting historical trivia about his regime. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, someone asks, can you do uh, Equestria War Kyria with the two and third plans succeeding? Um, yeah, sometime. I just, I'm just extremely busy in my life, so I'm not sure when I can play as him again, but sometime, absolutely. All right, wing statement. Many of the middle-level uh, middle cadres living in the country have the name of the Communist Party, but not the reality of the Communist Party. The Central Government issued instructions without seeking to understand the arbitrary instructions and the official style articles into an imperial sword to oppress the masses, just like a small feudal dictator in the past. I always believed that the central government was not effective in supervision, and only needed to send more working groups, but gradually the task force became bloated and then it became integrated with local cadres, so I gradually realized that the crux of the party's governance crisis, the people must be allowed to have a say. I was surprised that not only the cadres' right to speak was supreme in crisis management, but even the ordinary people were basically unable to intervene in everyday events. Maybe there is a speaking part of the work meeting, but this is after the task sent down from above. There is a guy, mandatory to the open discussion. The ordinary masses, lost initiative, reduced to a tool of government operation, the loss of good feedback channels. Party members into the government is a time to dissociate from the people. And then the occurrence of a much, such a large number of cadres as accidents, they can basically be explained. It is not The party discipline is not firm or individual moral corruption. The environment has made, however, some scroll pencils, turn out below, turn out below. Oh wow, we're actually losing a lot of political power now. Other programs. Oh god. Hey, look at that. National Defense Front. Tibet's looking pretty good now. Hey, we're BB. Too bad I can't get any higher than that. Hey, 0.21 is not bad. Growth is 7.6%. Inflation's okay. Um, yeah. Not bad. Just poverty get better, which is great, and more uh, growth. I love it. U.S. Japanese treaty signed. All right. Everything changed. Chinese people. Forget about not just saying Chinese people. Let's just say people. After the whole meeting, I realized that people's endurance is infinite, and even if they starve to death, they will not rebel. The working meeting is over. Cadres of our loves have left to the field to company the evening heat. Chen Yun shook his head and mysteriously approached Gao Gong and issued these theological remarks. So the whole remark puzzled Gao Gong and cannot help tapping his shoulder and called to Chen Yun. You're a dude for saying that. Chen Yun heard Gao Gong's rebuke, not angry and annoyed, but turned back and smiled a little. Think about it again. Who is the bigger jerk between us? Gao Gong was stunned by this question and carefully played with a seemingly inexplicable rejoinder. A, a, a green leaf gently fell, quietly rolled down the steps. Recall in the darkest moment of his life ten years ago, then look at Chen Yun's meaningful eyes. Gao Gong snorted and laughed. Tell me what you're thinking. I think that the masses love you because they don't understand, but the Great Leap Forward, you know, you're the number one big guy, and all the people around you know what you're talking about, and they all want to eat you alive. Go on. Zun lies at the face of longevity. Chairman Mao is also getting old, his body is getting worse and worse, and his brain is also... Chen Yun pressed his uh, voice to a very low level, and pointed to his own head with a finger. When they get to heaven later, if you fall in hard times in the future, who will be willing to fish for you? The question is too strange. Kun Sam, he already has liver cancer. Bo Yibo, he was the one who wanted to put you to death in the first place. You want me to find Deng Xiaoping? He also contributed back then, you have to repay him. In fact, Gao Gong has long understood Chen Yun's intentions. He tried several times to move out of his chauvinistic theory to refute, but in the face of the obvious truth, there's simply no power, and to be honest, through, though those through is still stupid. Help us on his flooded Gao Gong's shoulders, he only felt weak. Two eyes look at the skies and sighed heavily. Fine, I know. So what I'm thinking was costing us so much. Ooh, Asian National Revolutionary League. And we're the leader of the Asian National Revolution. All countries and peoples who have been invaded, controlled, interfered with, and bullied by the Japanese Empire unite to defeat our common enemy. Ministry of a Industry, yes, please. And of course, we have the Ministry of Agriculture, Role Investigation, Department of Foreign Affairs. We got good news, though. Fallen Chairman Mao's the direction. Fallen Chairman Mao's the light of darkness. Fallen Chairman is victory. All the people in the PLA and their base area are infinitely loyal to the Supreme Leader Chairman Mao. Infinitely loyal to the invincible Mao Zedong Tha. Infinitely loyal to uh, Chairman Mao's revolutionary line. How Chairman Mao is old command commanded. How we will act. Chairman Mao is ahead. Vice Chairman Lin is a deputy of the command. How to deploy. How we will follow closely. Victory is ours. Hey, oh, we actually have a surplus. Look at that. Even though we cut down growth a little more. And debt to GDP ratio, this is really nice. It's going to skyrocket because we annexed Tibet. We're looking pretty decent overall. Our GDP is what? A little less than 10 billion, which is not bad. Um, deficit, well, we have a surplus, which would be great. So actually, we can start working on the debt ever so slightly. Oof. Not ideal. Very good. Most things are fully developed. 
Xinjiang. South China Bureau. And we got the we got everyone that we could get, so. I'm feeling pretty good. Japanese alertness is zero percent. The manpower. Oh, it looks so good, is it not? The Eurasian detente. A piece is possible. Huh. Maybe, maybe not. But happy May, everybody. Rural investigation. If you cannot afford to pay the public rain, you will be branded as feudal peasants against socialism. After the criticism, meeting secretary recruit a large group of people to your home to dig three feet to search. Ah, the stove eye open. The water tank overturned. Even the quilt and pillow are to you to tear. To see if you hide food. Why did the villagers report the incident to the police out of the forest green incident? Report him. A sneer from the gra uh, farmer's grandfather cut a dripping wound into Zhu Yuan's heart. Well, then answering the question directly, the grandfather first asked rhetorically, How did you get to the village, girl? I took a donkey cart. It was that secretary who invited you here with the donkey cart, one Montclair outlet online. The face was suddenly cold and incomparable, shouting at Zhu Jian. You think he'll let you write these bad words? You can't even get out of this village after writing that. Zhu Jian felt the other party's anger. The hand clutching the pen kept trumbling, but she also aggrieved some chagrin. Even without a donkey cart, with her own physical strength, she cannot get out of the mountain. Just as Zhu Jian calmed down, the grandfather continued to pour a basin of cold water over the head. He lowered his voice for fear that someone at the root of the wall, eavesdropping as close as Zhu Jian, relying on the hushed sound to squeeze out what he wanted to say. To the Central Committee Chairman Mao, the letter to the commune will be withheld, not to allow to pass out. Want to go out of the village, no evidence to let out the militia will gut with guns to hold the village entrance so no one dares to break in. Speaking of which, the old farmer poked his head out of the window and still looked, looked out, picking his chin to show Zhu Jian a good luck. Look, there are people watching it. Yu Jian, look outside, a person wearing a gray and blue Zongshan suit in a place far from out of the house, wandering around. From time to time towards the house to look towards a couple of eyes, and they have to come and compound like a black hat, especially thorny. Seeing the situation, Yu Jian understood that he fell into a pit and could not climb out. And the interviewed grandfather also patted his trouser legs, dusted off the mud on his shoes, got up and said, Girl, you should do what, they, what to do what to do. So long as I want to open up and do not add trouble to the central, suffer it. The central committee thinks it's too complex. Sure, yeah. Agriculture's, well, rapidly getting there, but healthcare. Hey, industrial expertise and common industry will join to jump up to a nascent industrial base. Not bad. Growth mental power get even better. And this is already improved. That's getting there too. Electric professionalism. We'll see. Hey, a little more growth. Even better poverty, yeah. So we get slightly more growth. 0.2% more growth and better poverty and more political power. So that should help out with this too. Okay, so military. Oh, whoops. Oh, why did I choose that one? Oh, I did not want to choose that one. Whoops, my bad. Well, my fault. I should not click. I meant to click on this one. Whoopsie. Future again. Suggest holding and a briefing on reaching friendly relations between the U.S. and China in five years, inviting the heads of central ministries and commissions and major military regions to attend and updating them on the situation concerning the U.S. Seeing that Yu Kun made, lived, uh, came into the living room with something to say, Secretary Yu, who was reading the notes for them, Biao, stopped his voice and got up and left silently after Yi Kun a signal to him to go out. The company's main business is to provide a wide range of products and services to the market. As expected, Yi Kun explained at the outset, no matter what meeting is held, it is not always Zhu Enlai who makes a splash. He cranked his neck and looked from the side of Yi Kun and began to pace around the room, slowly saying, slowly, saying as slowly as he walked, He's not going to the meeting, are you? I said, How come you have no reaction at all? The Ministry of Foreign Trade has got on board with the Americans. Zhu Enlai and the Americans to do with sooner or later will be unlucky. I'm not talking about that. I mean, why don't you help your son find an errand from inside? Here in this Lin Biao directly froze. I thought you. I thought about it. The U.S. is a diplomatic matter. I cannot let Luan, Zhu Enlai, a person, take all the credit. Our family must also have a share. Your son is not a good looking at English, learning English. Directly to the foreign uh, Ministry of Foreign Trade as a diplomat, when the time to talk about what is accounted for him, isn't this a good thing to add glory and color? In the future, the liberation. We can also go to the U.S. with our son. How good. Yi Kun's words exceeded the sum of information Lin Biao had received in the past, and he rubbed his dry, thin chin. He said dizzy with a thousand questions. Will his own son's diplomacy work? What if it doesn't work? If not, will he practice and let Zhu and Lai personally lead? Success is all mine. In the future, to fight a big war, the army's not the place of permanent peace. Diplomacy is a good place to be. Cannot build, but become. 
Doing some things must held up as diplomats. Yeah, oh, that's not that's nice. Almost eight percent growth. Hey, we reached over ten billion dollars in this. Um, actually, now what's our sphere like? Impossible to see. The total sphere GDP on eighteen point six billion. Nice. We're not in the top ten, but whatever. Total world GDP is a hundred and almost two thousand billion. Hey, got some good news though. As people, Russians are killing each other, but no country for old men. Oh God. What? Ah. The bright and flashing spotlights were a great source of excitement in the brains of delegates. Uh, people's faces were smiling, and their hands were clapping, and they were shouting like a tsunami to celebrate the great victory of the front of these three years. Zunla sat on the delegates' table, seemingly as secure as the future of the front. For a moment, he suddenly felt that everything around him was unfamiliar. The lights were also so blind, and then Xi Ding, who was speaking beside him, did not know who he was. He looked to his left and right, overwhelmed by the clamor in all directions, his script trembling uncontrollably in his hands. Long live the Chinese Communist Party. Sudden slogan frightened Zhu and Lai, who was wandering in a trance, and his body was electrocuted, and his heart could not stop beating suddenly. He vaguely remembered that he had to dye his hair dry, dye black, not true, or wear a head covered, covering it a little better. The old look cannot meet people. Thinking of this, the head with a white hair seemed like a thousand pounds, with a light torso tilted to the left. Chen Yi noticed the difference and rushed to hold, while softly calling out, Premier, what happened to you? Premier, it's your turn. Lin Biao did not twist his face squarely, both arms crossed on the conference table, so with a programmed smile on his face, remind. Soon Lai's eyes were staring straight ahead. The anger on his face was gradually drained, leaving him to only mute and stiff, his mouth rambling on and on about something. He stood up with two bamboo-like legs, the speech had fallen out of his hands, but just now he at least remembered what he should do. Zoom had fallen sound, and the eyes of hundreds of delegates were directed at him. The unprecedented pressure was added to his body. This made his teeth close, breathing more and more ragged without saying a word, and the delegates confronted him, till like, a roll-up collapsed with a crash. Call the doctor, hurry up. Eventually they'll be gone, and the future of China is uncertain. Oh boy. Also, oh, we're pouring a lot of political power on this. That's probably why we're not happy as much. Oh, there's even more. Take precautions. The sudden illness of Premier Zhu at the Ninth Congress was like a wake-up call to all the comrades in the CPC. Time flies fast. Old age and illness were coming like a tide wave to the CPC, which had been established almost for 50 years. All the major offices were already running at full throttle, ready to face the coming political storm. Visit the patient. At a sensitive time, Karma Deng Xiaoping, the Secretary of the Secretariat, was invited to visit Premier Zhu. Oh my god, there's even more here. Nice. Foolish old man removes the mountains. Oh god. This seems like we're gonna have another episode of this. Oh, this, this one will be the last one. Zhang's plan. Han's plan. Achievements attributed to me. Wrote home, 1969, Xi'an. This was probably the first time Yang Yin Kai had been so close to Premier, perhaps the only time. Under the dismal white light. A large group of middle aged and elderly people in Zhongshan military uniforms were following her, pushing Premier Zhu and Lai's uh, hospital bed and dashing towards the emergency room. She was waved to wave away the people in front of her who were blocking the way, but she realized that the hospital bed arm rest had already been covered with a patch of sweat stains, and the voice from the den, Dean had become distant. Director Yang, please check the Premier's people. Director Yang, Comrade Yang Yin Kai. Yang Yin Kai suddenly woke up, but she still maintained her flying steps, and her right hand was already prohibiting Zhu and Lai's cheek. But she heard a muffled sound behind her, as if someone had fallen. She froze for a moment, having no time to care which poor, poor man had fallen behind her. As she looked up and down at the old man in front of her, with his eyes tightly closed and briefly ruffled his eyelids. There is no obvious trauma all over his body, his pupils are dilated, and the situation is dangerous. Um, Yang Yin Kai could barely hear her voice, only felt her heart thumping as if the sky was falling. The emergency room is already half an hour later. And see Yang Yin Kai take off the mask, anxiously seeing Deng Ying Chao, Bo Yi Bo, and other people immediately come up. Karma, doctor, how's the situation? Conditions now stable as the premier's acute illness should be a cerebrovascular problem. We have organized all the experts in the emergency internal medicine department to prepare for the surgery immediately. Facing so many heavyweights, Yang Yin Kai's voice shook a little uh, unconsciously, and she hurriedly left. After simply answering a few questions, she turned to her office, briefly washed her hands, and looked at the calendar hanging on the wall. So time is going so fast. What is this? Oh, look at this. After the 9th Congress, the Southwest and Northwest National Defense Fronts were merged, but the task of the Southwest Bureau is not yet over. At present, the Central Committee has approved a new round of work guidelines for the Southwest Bureau, and will have to devote ourselves to the construction of the Sichuan and Jikong area with full enthusiasm and a serious attitude. But more political power, better agriculture and industrial expertise improves, Chengdu gets better, slightly better, state GDP growth modifier, and... Ooh, more index. Oh, that's cool. Outside the emergency room. 
So, well, let's do this one first. Shuffling back and forth, uh, and white cloth pe people reflect in the miserable light in the corridor. Chen Yi only felt as if floating in a dream. Zhu and Lai is sick, is it? As sounds kept trembling, chills all over, two legs, seven twisted to catch up with the bed that sped in the emergency room. Perhaps the hospital just finished health per pure wet ground, perhaps the soles of the shoes slippery, or perhaps physical exhaustion led to soft legs. Con coinciding with this break, the foot of the juncture, Yen Chen Yi, in front of the emergency room, fell heavily with the big fat pier. Only to see in front of his eyes was instantly shrouded in darkness, followed by the shortness of breath and chest tightness. Do not know what to do. At this time, Yang Cheng Wu was ordered to take the guard company responsible for hospital security when he walked into the emergency section to see the chaos. But merely to see the people before and after, the president of the scene of the left, a right one of the outside, nurses passed drugs and instruments, running around dazzled, fat body, heavy Chen Yi, paralyzed in the middle of the crowd, two doctors squatting and kneeling on both sides of the exhaustion of the force that cannot be assisted up. The PLA began to maintain an order. Unrelated people are persuaded away or dispersed for uh, the medical personnel to clear a smooth channel. And another two soldiers helped Chen Yi. The dean asked for a full body check. Chen Yi waved his hand and said he had no problems. First focusing on saving Zhu and Lai, but he finally felt very uncomfortable. Body. Surrounded by unusually noisy and asked for a car to send himself home. Yang Cheng Wu helped Chen Yi to walk up the car. He could see that Chen Yi's spirit is a bit dazed. And asked early on the way out. Chen boss, why don't you go back for a checkup? Chen Yi could not speak, shook his head at Yang Cheng Wu and urged the driver to hurry up and speak and leave. The car went away, and Yang Cheng Wu had more important things to do. The Prime Minister has been hospitalized. The ability of the Prime Minister and Central People's Government Affairs Committee will be disabled. Oh. Great mandatory retirement. The older generation of revolutionaries within the party may no longer be fit to continue to take on the major tasks. And Comrade Zhu and Lai's prolapse had a clear mechanism for leadership transition and timer to, to be developed for the top echelons of the party to ensure that the transfer power can be completely smoothly when needed. Christian Socialist Victorious in Cabildo, Colombia. Wow. <coughs> And to avoid turmoil on the part of the front due to emergencies caused by the health of the older generation of leaders. Yeah, that makes sense. So losing the political power, 1.3, that's not good, but whatever. Christian, Republic of Colombia. Christian Socialism. In the OFN, oh, well, at least they're OFN observers or partners. La Valencia. On the shoulders of a giant. A gearing crisis. OFN involvement. Army of Saints and Sinners. That's actually really cool. Advanced Guerrilla Training. Camille Torres Restrepo. Well, if you're wondering about Christian socialism, please go ahead. A moment of enlightenment. After two days and a night of rescue, the red light outside the emergency room banged out. The door out of the exhausted attending doctor told the people to go outside of the door. Great news. The premier was out of a life threatening situation. Still in a coma, though, Zhu and Lai was pushed into the observation ward, Deng Ying Chao, in order to take care of a long time to live in. She waited for Zhu and Lai to wake up. The moment she saw her life partner open his eyes and call himself Zhao Chao, her eyes filled with tears of happiness. The intimate time between the two of them passed in a flash. Zhu and Lai's spirit slightly recovered and asked what about work. When he learned that the North Ninth National Congress was interrupted because of his own illness, his mood instantly became very low, as if there was a big stone firmly crashed in his chest. Having caused so much trouble to Chairman Mao, he did not yet know what kind of situation he would be put in. If it was only when Ding Ying Chao, so the Chairman Mao was sympathetic to his health and no problems with the interruption of the conference that Zhu and Lai was slightly relieved. It's just going to cost the delegates a few more days of food, Deng Ying Chao told a shallow joke in order to cheer up his old, her old companion. At this time, Bo Gu and Chao Guanhua came to visit the condition on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they were the first outsiders to arrive at the hospital, one station and one sitting in front of the hospital bed, exchanged pleasantries and said a few words of comfort, asking the Premier to take care of himself, and so on. Zhu Lai, eager to know the situation of the outside world, asked, How come Chen Lao Tong did not come? It was he who sent me to the hospital. Once his remark was made, the atmosphere in the ward instantly went cold. It turned out that on the second day of Zhu and Lai's resuscitation, Chen Yi was also sent to the emergency room by ambulance, which was caused by a big fall on the, big, on the day he escorted Zhu and Lai to the hospital. In the face of cultivating their own years of old leaders, Chao Guanhua told the Premier the truth. Chen Lao Tong, intracranial hemorrhage, fainted at home as Chen Lao Tong's wife called the ambulance. How did he get this disease? Bogu lowered his head and did not respond. Chao Guanhua. I hesitated for a moment, wanted to make up a blind story, but the unmatched sincerity and tenderness on the old leader's face made it difficult for him to resist. Not to mention how he had the ability to play smart in front of the premier. Chiao Guanhua had no choice but to tell him the same thing. The day I sent you to the hospital, Chen and Lao Zi fell down to the hospital and didn't have a checkup at the time. I didn't expect he fell and sustained internal injuries. Chen Yi's flying accident drained Zhu and Lai of all the strength within his shell that supported him, leaving only the boundless pressure to sear his body. He feared that his life was easy to lose. He felt that life was impertinent. And suddenly he uh, seemed to think of something and immediately made arrangements. Bring Kamen Xiaoping here. Retirement of old 
heroes, figureheads of the party. Uh, the PLA, as the armed force of the CPC, faces equally important problems. The veterans in the chain of command, such as Peng Du Huai and He Long, are all in their old age. How to carry out a smooth transfer of power and how to ensure the combat effectiveness and loyalty of the army are problems that must be faced and solved. Bedside conversations. <clears throat> Deng Xiaoping compiled. Will the physicians or comply with the physician's regulations? Put on a plain white coat, gently stepped into Zhu and Lai's ward, walked through the screen between the bed and the door. Zhu and Lai was wearing a blue and white hospital gown, quietly lying in bed with his eyes closed. He was hospitalized for a week before he was finally taken out the ventilator, but he couldn't take off his lips and chins. Couldn't take care of his lips and chins. So his gray and disheveled beard sprang up in an indisputable manner. Zhu and Lai's wife, Deng Jing Chao, stood by the facing sofa uh, with a drop down on the coffee table. Deng Xiaoping first shook hands with Deng Ying Chao and asked about Zhu and Lai's health. How do the pleasantries have been exchanged? Zhu and Lai greeted Deng Xiaoping and sat down in front of the hospital bed and then asked his wife to bring the draft to the small flat. This is the review that Ying Chao helped me write. Please re help me revise it and I hope me then help me convey it to the Chairman Mel. Deng Ying Chao also spoke up and Lai originally wanted me to change it, but there's some things I can't say well, so I have to ask you to keep an eye on it. Deng Xiaoping took the draft and read it carefully. Honorable Chairman Mao, I deeply review to you the political mistake of concealing my illness and I'm writing to bear the consequences of the failures of the conference that proceeds smoothly. During the 9th Congress, when I met with Mongolian delegates, I withdrew from this meeting halfway because I was not feeling well at the time. The doctor diagnosed me with heart disease and advised me to stop working and be hospitalized. However, I did not understand my condition well and did not look at the problem from the perspective of long-term development, and I paid attention to the doctor's advice which led to today's accident. Considering that it is difficult for my body to support my work in the future, I hope that a young comrade with a firm stance and capable handling of affairs will take over my position. Deng Xiaoping had finished reading the review. Looked particularly hesitant to when he saw Zhu and Lai's application for retirement. He looked up at Deng Xia, uh, Ying Chao, promising smile, and looked at him in the eyes at the, at the decline of Zhu and Lai, spit out six words. More admit mistakes, always right. The words did not fall, only to hear the next word. Teacups and tea bottles shattered all over the place. Deng Xiaoping looked on the next door, helplessly sighed. Why hasn't Kang Sheng been retired? Oh, Comrade Kang Sheng's gone. We're doing all right, though. I like how much growth we're having. I like how much surplus we're having. Inflation's down too. I think I'm in here because I didn't realize we would have another. Uh, uh, oh man, he's looking really old. My God, Mao, you are getting. Oh man, um, are we on stage two? We're on stage two. Extraction techniques. That's fine with me. Some processing. I think we can probably handle it. Expand uranium mining. It's gonna blow up the budget, but whatever. I'm actually gonna lower this to like nothing now. Um, this is gonna destroy the economy for now. It's a good thing we have a surplus right now because we've cut down everything else. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And when we read about honest talk, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.